This lecture is to provide an overview of the basic vertical curve relationships so that you may compute them successfully. There are two methods of computing vertical curves. One is tangent offset, and the one we will present here is the equation of a parabola. The inputs that you need to compute vertical curves include the grade or slope of each tangent that defines the curve, the inbound and the outbound tangent. You need to know the elevation and the station of the PVI, that is the point of vertical intersection. And you also need to know the curve length, that is the horizontal distance from the PVC to the PVT. The PVC is the point of vertical curvature, and the PVT is the point of vertical tangency. We will limit our discussion today to symmetrical vertical curves. These are the components of the vertical curve. As we mentioned, the length extends from the PVC to the PVT. It is a horizontal length. Because this curve is symmetrical, the length is split evenly, so that half of the length runs from the PVC to the PVI, and the other half runs from the PVI to the PVT. If this curve were asymmetrical, those two distances would not be the same. The methods for asymmetrical curve computation are built upon the methods you will learn here. Therefore, should you need to use asymmetrical vertical curves, I encourage you to consult any university level surveying text to determine the proper method for doing that. The inbound grade or slope we call G1 and the outbound grade or slope we call G2. The midpoint of the vertical curve is not necessarily the low point or the high point. In this case, we have drawn this figure as one where G1 equals G2. The inbound slope equals the outbound slope. However, that scenario does not commonly occur, although it is possible. So we will see via later computations how to determine the station and the elevation of the high point or low point. The equation of the parabola requires that we calculate the variable r, which is the change in grade per station. A station, as you recall, is a distance of 100 feet. The initial grade and the final grade, G1 and G2, are slopes, and those are typically expressed in percent. In this scenario, L, the length of the curve in stations, as we said, is based on that 100-foot station increment. So if we have a curve length of 1,200 feet, L for that curve is 12. That is 1,200 feet divided by 100 feet gives us 12 stations, that curve. I want to caution you at this point to say that you are likely to find texts or references that instead of using percentages here and length of curve in stations, may instead use decimal values and feet. So my caution is to be certain that you know what the inputs are for the method you are using. Once we have these values, G1, G2, and L, we can calculate R. And R will be a portion of step three here. Number one, first we'll compute the PVC and PVT elevations using normal slope calculations. Number two, we'll calculate the value of R, that is the total change in grade per station. And then number three, we'll insert our data into a chart we will illustrate here in a moment and compute final curve elevations. For an example problem, I want to give you a vertical curve that is 800 feet long. It is a symmetrical curve. Its PVI occurs at 50 plus 0, 0, and that PVI has an elevation of 550.97. G1 is minus 6%. G2 is a positive 2%. So as we said in step one, let's calculate the PVC station and the elevation at the PVC. Half of the curve length, or 400 feet, prior to the VPI gives us a station of 46 plus 0, 0. When we take the VPI station and apply a slope of 
six percent for 400 feet we will come up with an elevation of 574.97 likewise the process is similar but going in the other direction for the PVT as we said before to come up with our value of R we need to input percentages so 2.0 percent is G2 and G1 is a negative 6.0 percent so 2 minus a negative 6.0 gives us a total of 8 and we'll divide that by the length of that curve in stations an 800 foot curve is 8 stations long so 8 divided by 8 gives us 1 we will take these values and use them as inputs for vertical curve elevation and in this equation at the bottom of the screen here you'll see x and x is a distance measured from the PVC also expressed in stations this is the data that we generate for this 800 foot vertical curve we already calculated the PVC elevation and the PVT elevation each of our stations here is 100 feet apart so X from 47 plus 00, 0 back to the PVC is 1 that is 100 feet divided by 100 gives us 1 so if we progress across the chart we can see that here at 47 uh, we have a value of x, x1, r over 2 times x squared, and g1x. And we apply this to our PVC station per the equation that we have here at the bottom of the previous screen. And you'll see that our elevations trend downward from the PVC. Here's 74, 69, 64, 61, 58, 57 looks like we're flattening off then 56 and then back up to 57 and 58 the low point for this vertical curve appears to fall somewhere in the vicinity of 52 plus 00, zero. in fact there is a simple equation for coming up with that elevation of a high point or low point and this is of course compatible with the equation of the parabola method the lowest point on a sag vertical curve or the highest point on a crest vertical curve lies at the distance of x stations that is x times 100 feet from the PVC of the curve the inputs here are G1 and R so the absolute value of G1 divided by R is our value of x we'll take this value of x and plug it into our vertical curve elevation equation to find the high point or the low point so in this case, for example, problem 1, G1 is, has a value of 6, R has a value of 1, giving us a result of 6 for X. Well, that's 6 stations, or 600 feet. We add that 600 feet to our PVC station, and we come up with 52 plus 00. zero. This is one of the stations that we saw in our data just a few moments ago. 556.97 occurred at 52 plus 00. zero this is a rather idealized example but you will see with some real-world data here in just a moment that station is not necessarily going to fall on an even station in many cases and you can see here at the bottom of the screen the calculation that gives us that low point elevation notice that the low point doesn't occur directly over the PVI in fact the low point on a sag vertical curve or the high point on a crest vertical curve usually occurs under or over the flatter of the two slopes in this case the flatter of our two slopes is the positive 2.0 this picture shows a handful of vertical curves the one in the foreground shows a sag as we approach uh, an intersection and as the truck that you see in this picture approaches that intersection it is climbing a crest vertical curve well let's go ahead and talk about a crest vertical curve example the computation processes are the same this particular crest vertical curve has a length of 285 feet and you can see the PVI station and elevation listed and we have a G1 value of positive 1.33 percent 
and a G2 value of negative 4.08%. This is a symmetrical curve, so therefore we will split the distance L so that half of that distance goes from the PVC to the PVI and the other half goes from the PVI to the PVT. So here are the same type of computations but with less idealized numbers and our PVC station is half of 285 feet less than the PVI station. And you can see the elevation calculated there, 80747 that occurs at station 24 plus 8915. The PVT station is computed just the same way. Now our total change in grade per station is not going to be such a neat number as you saw in the previous example. Here we have a minus 4.08 percent uh, and from that we subtract a positive 1.33 percent and divide the whole thing by 2.85. 2.85 is the number of stations. Recall that the 285 foot curve, once we divide it by 100 is 2.85 stations long. So the values of x that we plug into the equation will not be so neat. In fact, here is uh, the computation for this particular curve. You can see the PVC, the PVI, and the PVT listed down the left side. And instead of computing every 100 feet, we wanted more detail, so we have shown elevations every 25 feet as well. Notice that the, the x value at the PVT is 2.85 feet. The x value at the PVI is one half of that. In fact, if you look a little closer, you'll notice that the x value at 25 plus 25 is 0.25 greater than the x value at 25 plus 0, 0. In fact, as you go every 25 feet, the value of x increases by 0 0.25, or effectively one quarter of one station. The values of x squared, r over 2 times x squared, and g1x all show up there. And the vertical curve elevation is built off of the PVC station. Notice because we have a crest vertical curve here that our values climb. We start at uh, the PVC and they climb a little bit and it looks like they start to peak somewhere around 2575 and then they continually drop off as we get to the PVT. That seems to be consistent with our picture. In fact, if you were looking at this picture, which has a, a 10 to 1 exaggerated vertical scale, you would probably estimate that the high point falls between the PVC and the PVI. And that is indeed the case, given the numbers that we have calculated here. So let's find, find out just where that high point really is. By well, using the same method we saw before, we plug in G1, we plug in R, get the absolute value of that uh, result, comes out to 0 0.701. That in stations is 70.1 feet, and thus we can find the high point is at 25, or 25 plus 59.25 feet. And the high point elevation is 807.94. Let's look back at the data. We said that would fit between 2550 and 2575 and if you look right here 2550 is just within a hundredth vertically of what that value would be at 25 plus 59.25 so this gives us a good estimate of where the high point will be but if we want to know geometrically the true high point we need to use this particular solution and as we expected it falls between the PVC and the PVI because, in this case, the flatter of the two slopes falls in that range of the curve.
Vertical curves certainly are uh, simpler than circular curves, but nonetheless very, very important for things such as drainage, clearances, minimizing earth volumes, as you can see in a picture like this. And we need to be able to calculate them properly to avoid uneven profiles and, and bumps in our street profiles. And hopefully this particular lecture has clarified some things for you, and I appreciate your attention.